is the chair of that caucus, State Senator Stephen Bradford. Welcome to the show for the first time. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, let's begin with Senate Bill 2, which you are the driving force behind. Can you explain to us what it is, what it does, and why you believe it's so important? Senate Bill 2 is just simply police decertification, a fair, transparent way to get rid of bad cops who have committed a crime, who have used deadly force unreasonably, committed some type of egregious act, has tampered with evidence, framed uh, individuals, you name it, a criminal act, a way of getting rid of those officers. California is now one of four states without a decertification process. And this is common sense. We have methods to get rid of bad lawyers, bad teachers, bad doctors. But in California, we have no way of getting rid of bad police officers. They can be fired only to be hired by another police department the next day. So this will take away their certification, removing their right to uh, carry a badge and, uh, and a gun here in California and work in the law enforcement. Well, you, you just made me think of malpractice insurance. Do you think that this would become a thing where police officers have to invest in that? And what would that do to uh, potential f future recruitments to the force? Not at all. I mean, uh, this will not affect the majority of men and women who put the uniform on, put the badge on, and go out and do this job in an honorable and respectful way. We know it's a tough job. And the majority of those men and women do it the way it was supposed to be done. It's for those that small percentage that we have seen all too often, not only in California, but across this country, uh, just in the last week, let alone the last year, the last hundred years here in the state of California, especially when it comes to black and brown people. So, no, it wouldn't require any uh, additional insurance coverage. Uh, they do their job just like they're covered now. They'll be uh, in good stead. So this sounds pretty common sense. Uh, what is the opposition to this? Because it's not a slam dunk yet in terms of having all the votes necessarily. What are people saying to you? It's law enforcement. I mean, and no matter all the negotiations we've done in good faith, law enforcement continues to come up with reasons why this is not good. Oh, yes, we support uh, decertification, but you have to remove this part. Or you have to remove this that part. Mm -hmm. And we're still in, in negotiations and earnest negotiations on both sides. But I don't think we'll ever get to uh, where law enforcement will be in agreement. Because if they do get in agreement, believe me, the bill will do absolutely nothing if they're totally in support of this bill. We want to get your reaction to uh, Riverside County Sheriff Chad Bianco. He joined us on Friday night, and he basically said what you just said about weeding out uh, just the bad cops. He said, go ahead and listen to what he said about law enforcement being good. I think we have an unbelievable false narrative that's being spread trying to divide the country and law enforcement. And the overall 99 point way up something percent of law enforcement are good, ethical, honest law enforcement officers that are only here to do the right thing and to serve others. And to say that this narrative that law enforcement is going out and attacking black people and attacking the black community is just not true. What's your reaction to that? I totally disagree. I would tell you if my, our Caucasian brothers and sisters were getting killed at the same rate as black and brown people, not only would they be talking about uh, defund the police, they would clearly be talking about unarmed police. And it's just a, it, it's two different worlds when it comes to people of color. And often they say that people of color hate the police. They don't. They fear the police. All we want is the same level of police protection and uh, services that our white brothers and sisters get. I mean, whether we are affluent or poor in this country, you police communities of color differently. And that's that's a fact. It's no different. When's the last time you turned on the TV and see a 16-year-old being shot, a 13-year-old being shot? a father with his kids in a car being shot four times in the back. We can go on and on. Eric Gardner, you know, Stephon Clark, East Zell Ford here in L.A. They're all people of color. And it, it, it's the farthest thing. We are targeted. It's a bias, not an intentional bias by law enforcement as a whole, but of those bad officers, they have a lack of reverence for life when it comes to people of color because 
white individuals with guns and threatening seem to make it home. Last week, for example, I forgot what state it was, they stopped a, a gentleman, the, the officer reaches into the car, not only does the driver roll up the window, he takes off and drags the officer for about 30 yards while beating the officer with a hammer. That guy made it home to his family that night. Mm. He might have been arrested, but he posted bail, and you see his booking photo, didn't have a scratch on him. So that being a black or brown person, we'd be talking about a funeral right now. Uh, a couple quick questions just to wrap up. Uh, so you've got, in California, a, a Democratic Senate, a Democratic Assembly, and a Democratic governor. Is this going to pass? How confident are you that you have the votes on this? I'm confident that my colleagues will do the right thing. They've seen enough. And in the words of Fannie Lou Hamer, we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And true enough, uh, my colleagues, it's only two African-Americans in the Senate, and it's only nine of us in the legislature as a whole. So the majority of us have not walked in our shoes. But if they have and listen, I think they've been convinced by what they've seen in the last year uh, that we need real reform here in California when it comes to law enforcement and criminal justice. And lastly, uh, news of the day, that Democratic governor, Gavin Newsom, today we are now at uh, enough signatures to have a recall election officially in the fall. What say you about that? My guess is you're saying we should keep the governor. Without a doubt, the governor has proven that he is doing the right thing. Leadership is not a popularity contest. And the governor had to make some tough decisions when COVID struck. Uh, last year. And they were hard decisions. We all have to admit to that. But they were the right decision to save lives. And the proof is in the pudding right now. Our infection rate is the lowest right now in the nation. And we're soon to have California back open, maybe not at 100 percent of where we were, but we're well on our way to doing that. So I commend the governor for taking the hard stance. And elections, of course, are a popularity contest. You've won plenty of them. The governor has won plenty of them. Right now, it looks like he's the favorite to win that recall election coming up in a few months as well. People are going to do the right thing. I agree. State right. Senator Stephen Bradford, thank you so much. And we will be looking out for Senate Bill 2. And see what